Good morning and welcome to this online service. My name's Greg Smith and we're broadcasting from the Ponsbury and Stiperstones benefices in South Shropshire. The glory of the Shropshire Hills are behind me and every day we have cause here to thank God for the wonder of his creation. This morning we'll be thinking about how our ways are not God's ways and explore the challenge of how we align our thinking with his. Jesus Christ is King of it. He lives his life in us for the sake of the world. Jesus is alive today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lord Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone, and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the God of love and power Forgive us and free us from our sins. Heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, 
and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. And now two Bible readings. The first brought to us by Robert and the second by Molly. The first reading is taken from Colossians chapter 3 verses 1 to 11. Since then you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways, in the life you once lived, but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all, and is in all. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. taken from Luke chapter 12 verses 13 to 21. A man in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, tell my brother to divide with me the property our father left us. Jesus answered him, My friend who gave me the right to judge or to divide the property between you two. And he went on to say to them all, Watch out and guard yourselves from every kind of greed because a person's true life is not made up of the things he owns, no matter how rich he may be. Then Jesus told them this parable. There was once a rich man who had land which bore good crops. He began to think to himself, I haven't anywhere to keep all my crops. What can I do? This is what I will do, he told himself. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, where I will store my corn and all my other goods. Then I will say to myself, Lucky man, you have all the things you need for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, You fool, this very night you will have to give up your life. Then who will get all these things you have kept for yourself? And Jesus concluded, This is how it is with those who pile up riches for themselves, but are not rich in God's sight. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now we're going to hear Richard preach on that Gospel reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A short while ago I watched a documentary on the history of punk music. It was a really enjoyable and interesting four-part series and it charted the rise of the punk scene from its early iterations in the 60s before the final episode highlighted how with the explosion of bands like Nirvana and Green Day, 
punk went from the relative fringes of the music industry to the mainstream and how the money got involved. And the genre had a choice to make. It could follow the money and make lots of it by selling a pale pastiche of the rawness of the punk sound of the 70s and 80s. Or it could blow its brains out like Kurt Cobain of Nirvana did when he saw the direction of travel. I watched another documentary about a band called the KLF and how they had huge commercial success in the 1990s by doing the absolute opposite of all the good advice given to wannabe pop and rock stars who enter the sausage machine of shows like The X Factor. The KLF were poetic, edgy, interesting and gifted. But the money they accumulated sat on their souls like a heavyweight until they decided one night to burn it all in a farm outbuilding on the Western Isles. One million pounds up in smoke. And nobody could get their heads quite round it. In short summary, money ruins almost everything. Let's look quickly at three points. Firstly, we note that Jesus' ministry is not about the incidental patching up of injustices, whether perceived or real. The tale starts with someone asking Jesus to intervene in a family dispute about inheritance. The man might have had a point. He, his brother might have been acting unjustly. But Jesus snaps back pretty sharpish. Who made me the judge over you, man? Jesus gets co-opted into a lot of causes today. What would Jesus do in relation to a host of different questions? All these co-options bring about the same tone-deaf approach that the individual who wanted Jesus to arbitrate in his inheritance dispute. Jesus' ministry was not, and is not, about the patching up of injustices. It was, and is, however, about the bearing up, the destroying, and resolving of the great injustice, death. And from that, the raising up of an entirely new and reconciled creation. Secondly, the rich man. He's like the rich men of all throughout time. He sees an opportunity to add to his wealth and that's the driving factor of his decision making. He could have been the rich music man in the 1990s looking at edgy pop, uh, punk bands in Seattle and thinking, there's a million or two to be made here. Or someone happy to take the dreams and hopes of hundreds of kids and squeeze them into a mold in order to create bland, one-hit wonders. And who cares if anyone gets hurt on the way? In each case, the rich man, whoever it is, is quite happy to rip down his barns in order to build bigger ones, regardless of whoever might happen to be in the way. Quite happy to use who they need to sell the next single. Quite happy to co-opt a movement and pile in money and glitter if there's a way to make even more money off the back of it. And who cares about any of the individuals? The rich person's life is out of sync. He sees only at the level of this world his focus, his comfort, his self-congratulation, and it's all illusory. In the parable, Jesus is making the fool do what we all tend to do, congratulate ourselves as we mistakenly assume that we are the captains of our own destiny. But here's the punch. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life is being demanded of you. Who is going to own all the stuff that you spent your life chasing up and building up? And so thirdly and finally, what does God really require here? In the quiet concluding sentence, Jesus says, this is how it will be for those who store up treasures for themselves on earth rather than in heaven. Now, of course, we instantly get into a debate there about what the man should have done with his money. And we mistakenly think that this is all about where the money goes, but it isn't about that at all. If you think it is, then consider the prostitute who anoints Jesus with expensive perfume and the indignant response, that could have been sold and given to charity. Jesus says, no, my ministry isn't about the redistribution of wealth or any other material resources. It is about being rich in God's sight and how to be rich in God's sight. 
We don't like it, perhaps. We prefer the supposedly easier narrative of dividing up wealth between, in our view, the deserving and the undeserving. But as far as Jesus is concerned, this is not what he is about. He did not come to arbitrate between opposing arguments of what we should do with our wealth. Like the rich fool, we will all come to the poverty of death, no matter how successful we have been, no matter how much money we have made. And the whole question of everything comes down to whether we've been rich into God. Amen. Let us declare our faith in the living God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We, we believe in one God, God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we're going to hear from Liz, who's going to tell us about the many ways in which God has blessed her through the course of her life. Looking back over my Christian life has given me the opportunity to realise how good God has been to me and to thank him for his faithfulness. I was born into an actively Christian family and therefore it was probably not until I was 14 or 15 did I realise that my faith was probably borrowed from my parents. And I can remember quite clearly committing my life to Jesus Christ in a very deliberate and um, thought out way. My teenage years and college years were full of Christian activity and they were such a valuable time because they gave me the freedom to witness to my friends, to learn, to, to learn to work with other young Christians and to know that God was working through all our lives in Crusaders and Youth for Christ and, and uh, schools Christian unions. There were other times too when I knew that I had to stand firm for my Christian faith despite some opposition. And I'm so grateful to God that on those occasions God honoured that stand and altered circumstances. And uh, it was so reassuring at the time that God was active in my life. Taught for three years, and then I had a wonderful opportunity to go to Bible college for a year. I was living with people who had heard God's call and were training to do parish work and missionary work. And I didn't know what God was calling me to do. But I did know that I wanted to find out. And as I prayed about the future, so the possibility came up for working with students in colleges of education mostly, and some universities, in connection with the InterVarsity Christian Fellowship. No one knew I had accepted this job, and no one knew that I was told that I had to provide myself with a roadworthy car. A phone call from an aunt of mine who was a great prayer said, we were praying for you this morning and God told us you needed a car. We don't know why, but we've got you one. Could you come and get it? I thought I could do that. But quite seriously, that was a wonderful, wonderful seal on the call that God had given me to this work. And it was amazing provision from him to enable me to, to do the work that lay ahead of me. The work with students was a time of learning for me. It was a time of learning to trust God in all sorts of ways. And I can remember praying as I drove towards a college that I would quickly see what the needs were, that I would understand the students that I met 
that I would be enabled to speak at a meeting or lead a Bible study group meaningfully. And also, God enabled me amazingly to find my way all the time. I travelled a lot by myself. And um, navigating is not my strong point, but God really took me to the places I needed to go and protected my life on one occasion. And I'm so grateful to him for that time, which came to an end. And I then had to ask God again, what am I going to do now? And through a very extraordinary way, I ended up being appointed to teach RE, for which I wasn't qualified. Um, in an all-boys secondary school run by a Christian head and uh, that was very very different from sitting in a cozy room with students who wanted to study the Bible. It was being like thrown into the lion's den almost because there they were these boys some of whom didn't want to still be at school and they certainly didn't want to learn RE and so I was made to pray again very much for God's help with that work. And it was quite amazing how God opened the way to present the gospel in that school in some new ways and ways that reached a lot of pupils and many of the staff. And I, th I thank God for those opportunities that were given to me. That led on to further teaching and then finally well, not finally, then on to retirement. And now I'm older. I'm, I'm finding it so helpful to look back to see how God has helped me in the past, how I've been able to trust him, and now with different kinds of church involvement and different kinds of family circumstances, I'm learning to trust him in a different way. As I look back, I know very well that there have been times of failure and there have been times of disobedience and there have been times when things weren't right. And I'm so grateful that we have a God who forgives and restores and puts back on the road again. So as I come to my older age, I'm reminding myself that prayer doesn't stop and learning doesn't stop and God's faithfulness doesn't stop. Our prayers are going to be led for us by Fran. Lord God, we offer our prayers to you. Prayers of thanksgiving for all your gifts to us. We have much to be thankful for in our lives. Your gift of the world in which we live and which we have inherited. This world which we abuse through our lack of care and lack of thought. This world which we use as a careless possession. Help us to care for our world and to care for those who dwell on it your gift of the peoples of the earth, those we love and those we choose not to love, all are precious in your sight. We pray for those who are less fortunate, who live in poverty, economic poverty and poverty of relationships, those whose lives are full of fear or strife the fears of financial struggle and inability to cope, the fears of racial tension and hatred. We pray that in our thinking and understanding of the world and its people, we may strive to align our thoughts and understanding of what you would want of us. We 
give thanks and pray for those near to us, our friends and our families. Help us to appreciate and value our own good fortune, to be honest and unselfish, seeking to serve others, those nearby and those in the wider community. We have so much. Give us grace to share our plenty with those who have little or nothing. Those who need a friendly face, a gentle word, a little time freely given. Give us what we need to be more willing to give of ourselves for the needs of others and give us the capacity to share what we have rather than lay up our gifts as treasure. Help us to love others as you love us. Your love never binds us. It expands us and liberates us. In our freedom, may we feel your message of love and compassion. Give us to share that love and compassion with those whose needs are greater than our own. Giving without expectation of any return. and heal any who suffer in body, mind or spirit, giving them courage and hope and bring them the joy of your salvation. Be near to each of them in their need and give us the compassion, the skill and the opportunity to serve them in the best way that we are able. We do not know what is in store for us. Only let us have your grace to live with your blessing. We pray for the departed, those known to us and those not, and especially any whose presence we miss in our own lives. We keep them forever in our hearts and ask that your peace may rest upon them as they dwell in your loving care. We pray that, as promised, you will grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. want to love, help us to forgive any who may have caused us distress or hurt. Help us to be forgiving towards ourselves, then it may become easier to forgive others. Help us to forgive so we will have joy Help us to forbear so we will have patience. Help us to 
forgive and forbear, so we will have everlasting peace within and without. And in all this, may strive to work with others as you would wish, as your Son demonstrated to us in his life on earth. Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, that when we meet in his name and pray according to his mind, he will be among us and hear our prayer. In your love and mercy, fulfill our desires and give us your greatest gift, which is to know you, the only true God, and your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the choir of St George's Ponsbury are going to sing. Thank you for joining us this morning. We do hope that you were encouraged by our time together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.